morning, you guys. I'm your host, Stacey Cole Morgan, and you are listening to the Morgan Man Sports Podcast here on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Good Pod HQ, or wherever you find your preferred podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, today we got a jam packed show talking about the very last weekend of Major One Qualifiers, Week Four, with a lot of matches that is happening that could determine placements for this Major One tournament in Boston next weekend. So, guys, it's definitely going to be an exciting time. And also, we are talking about the rumors of Bill Belichick, Matt Ryan's take on it, and also just the hit coaches or former coaches from other teams that the Atlanta Falcons have interviewed this far going into the head coach search, basically. So without any further delay, let's go to get straight into today's action. Yeah, so we are kicking things off right here with the Call of Duty League. So this weekend, we got a jam-packed weekend right here going into the last weekend before the Major One Tournament happens. So this Friday, January 19th, you got the Minnesota Rocker taking on the Los Angeles Gorillas. Optic Texas taking on Miami Hurtics. And New York Subliners taking on Toronto. That's definitely going to be a key matchup right there. Saturday, January 20th, you got Toronto versus Las Vegas Legion. Miami Hurtix versus Los Angeles Gorillas. Seattle Surge taking on the Minnesota Rocker. And Atlanta Faze taking on the Carolina Royal Ravens. And then finally, this Sunday, January 21st, you got the Carolina Royal Ravens taking on the Los Angeles Thieves. New York Subliners taking on the Boston Breach. And Atlanta Faze versus Optic Texas. With the rivalry renewed. Guys, this is, again, this is a really interesting weekend right here. And going into your CDL point standings right here, Atlanta Phase is currently sitting at number one with 50 points, 5 0, 15 3 in the map win loss ratio. New York Subliners are not far behind them right here. They are tied for first place, but what separates them from Atlanta Phase, they have three more losses in the map win-loss ratio, so they are 15 and six. Toronto Ultra is sitting at number three, Optic Texas is sitting at number four, and Miami Hurtix is sitting at number five. Seattle Surge at six, LAG at seven, Boston Breach sitting at eighth, Rocker ninth, Royal Ravens 10th, the Vegas Legion sitting at 11th, and the Los Angeles Seas sitting at number 12, so definitely we have had a shakeup this past weekend in CDL point standings. So this is where it's going to be interesting because you got the number two and three seed facing off against each other this Friday. And then Toronto, if they win that, they could potentially move up to that number two spot. But Atlanta Face is definitely going to win out. They got to at least have one three and one series it won 3 0 series, and now I'm predicting that's going to be the 3 0 against the Carolina Royal Ravens and the 3 1 against Optic Texas. I don't see them just completely sweeping Optic right now, maybe later on down the road, but right now Optic is still hot. They're, they're the fourth seed right now with just one loss, 14 to 7 in the Mount win loss ratio. So, again, it's it's going to be interesting. That top four is playing to their fullest this weekend, and I really expect them to just give it their all because, again, you got two and three seed playing, and then you got one and four seed playing this weekend, and that's going to determine who's going to be that top seed. Now, again, a lot of that don't matter now, but – you want to stay at the top. You really do. And these points do matter at the end of the year because you are guaranteed, I think, at least that first round bye, if I'm not mistaken now. We'll have to wait and see. But for right now, that's the current CDL point standings. But my top three matches, guys, I'm looking forward to. Obviously, sitting at number one is Atlanta Face versus Optic Texas. That's your one and four seed right there facing off against one another. I'm taking phase in the 3-1 series. I think it's where it's going to be. Optic's going to take advantage of that hard point 
on the very first map, and then it it just lights a fire under Phase's ass and says, "You know what? We're not going to do this again this year. We're beating y'all, okay? So get over it." The second series right here definitely is going to be New York versus Toronto. I see this being potentially one of the best matches of the weekend, if not the second best. And then finally, the third right here, I'm going to have to say, honestly, it's going to be Octa Texas versus Miami Heretics because, again, you got that fourth seed and you got the fifth seed going against each other. Miami definitely needs to win this right here. But Optic, they're on a roll right now. They got a lot of momentum going into this last weekend and going into that major one tournament. So me personally, I'm going to have to take Optic in a 3-2. That will definitely help in the map or CDL point standings for FaZe, New York Subliners, and Toronto Ultra. But for FaZe to stay at that top, they got to win out, and they got to at least have a 3-1 series and a 3-0 series. Again, when I said 3-0 series is going to be against the Royal Ravens, that's my prediction, and 3-1 series win over Optic this weekend with the Atlanta FaZe squad. So, yeah, guys, that's definitely right there what's to be expected this weekend. I'm honestly looking forward to it. I made a meme, actually, on my TikTok. You can follow me at Morgan Man Sports on TikTok or any other social media platform. And you can see the very funny clip that I did make with uh, Skip Bayless from uh, Undisputed. Like, it's my turn. And, you know, has the face logo right in front of him. Definitely funny. And it says, like, face looking at Optic Texas this weekend. <laughs> It's my turn. I, I, I just fell in love with that. So definitely check it out if you got the time. So guys, now we're going to switch on over to the Atlanta Falcon side of things. So this is where it gets very interesting now for the podcast. So let's talk about the Matt Ryan thing first. So Matt Ryan was asked on CBS, I guess like the app or, you know, whatever it may be. And he was asked, what was his opinion on Bill Belichick potentially coming to Atlanta? His response was uh, was pretty much how like I would put it. If you are in that situation with Belichick and Arthur Blank, you're wanting to win right now. And winning now means you got an established head coach, but you need someone else, and that's the quarterback. And Belichick... Of course, he ain't getting Tom Brady, but he can go get a veteran quarterback. Matt Ryan said this perfectly. If you're going to go for Bill Belichick, you need a veteran quarterback with these young, talented wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, et cetera, et cetera. We got a okay defense. I mean, we're top 15 in the National Football League. Could be better, but hey, we're taking it right now. So definitely, there is a good situation right there. But all you need is that veteran quarterback if you are bringing in Bill Belichick. But if you're going younger, Belichick's not the answer. You go for me personally. Now, Matt Ryan did not say this. But me personally, I would say you go after Jim Harbaugh or you go after someone like a Ben Johnson, in my opinion. You know, but then again, that relies on a question, like we said with Arthur Smith, even though he's a great OC for talking about Ben Johnson, is he going to make that switch over to the head coach position very well while still making play calls on that defense or offense? Excuse me. Me personally, that's what I'm worried about if we do select Ben Johnson. But Jim Harbaugh definitely would love to see it right there. Of course, he's going to bring in his quarterbacks, his talent group, his coaches, everything. But, again, Jim Harbaugh, I think, would be the right answer for the Atlanta Falcons this offseason. But if we do pick up Bill Belichick, it's not the end of the world, guys. It's really not the end of the world. You just got to sit back and, like, okay, we got Bill Belichick. He's probably going to bring in a veteran quarterback to play for the Atlanta Falcons because we already got a star-studded receiving core. We got a mid-tier defense that can be better especially under Bill Belichick. And 
we're, we're just a head coach and a quarterback away from winning a Super Bowl for the first time in franchise history. So it's definitely going to be an interesting one right there. So that was Matt Ryan's take right there on Bill Belichick coming to Atlanta. You just got to take a veteran quarterback if you do choose Belichick as your next Atlanta Falcons head coach. So speaking of head coaches for the Atlanta Falcons, this is the Atlanta Falcons head coach tracker. So the Atlanta Falcons are actively searching for the 19th head coach in franchise history. The organization parted ways with Arthur Smith at midnight after the final game of the 2023 regular season game on January 8th. Falcons leadership immediately began looking for his replacement. We'll document the process extensively in this Falcons head coach tracker on AtlantaFalcons.com slash news slash 24 head coach search tracker interview Arthur Blaine, Rich McKay, Terry Fano, on so on so forth like that. But anyway, so the head coaches, Bill Belichick coming in at number one right here. The interview announcement was Monday, January 15th. Former job was New England Patriots head coach. The resume highlights spent 24 seasons as head coach of New England Patriots, where he led the Patriots to 17 division titles and six Super Bowl championships. Now, me personally, I do like the resume. I really do, especially, you know, considering that one of those Super Bowls was against the Atlanta Falcons. But we're not going to talk about that no more, okay? This is where you get an Andy Reid kind of situation where you're hoping it's going to be an Andy Reid situation. Is he going to work out for the Atlanta Falcons? And if so, that's great. We win a Super Bowl. But how long is he going to stay, you know, coaching pretty much? That's the question if you do hire Bill Belichick. Is he going to be our next Andrew Reid? Or the next Andrew Reid, I should say. Second on the list is Anthony Weaver. He is the current Baltimore Ravens assistant head coach slash defensive line coach. Resume highlights, he was the Cleveland Browns 14-15 defensive line coach for two seasons. Houston Texans 2016-2020. through 2020. Spent four seasons as the defensive line coach before moving up to defensive coordinator in 2020. And then Baltimore Ravens, 21, now through present. Weaver started as a defensive line slash defensive run game coordinator and became the Ravens assistant head coach slash defensive line coach a season later, the position that he currently holds. So definitely that is a good position right there to definitely look into for defensive line coach give Ryan Nielsen a little bit of help, pick it out who he thinks should be the right fit on that defensive line. And also getting some head coach experience. So definitely not, not too, uh, not too sad on that one. I really like it. Now do forgive me right here, but it is Edrell Evro. If I'm pronouncing it right, current job is to Carolina Panthers defensive coordinator. So, again, we're going into our division rivals now. I kind of just don't like it, but at the same time, the Carolina Panthers did have a very great defense. They held the Bucks to only nine points, so that was definitely good. They held a lot of opponents to a short amount of points, but their offense did not click. So, that kind of kept Carolina from just winning a lot of games except for two, and one of them was against against the Atlanta Falcons. So, not going to talk about that one either. Antonio Pierce, the current job is the Las Vegas Raiders interim head coach. Definitely, this is a good one. He almost got them to the playoffs. So, I do like that move right there. It would be interesting to see. And there's, and actually, and I'm not going to, not trying to bring this up just out of context, but there is a lot of like black head coaches that they are interviewing for. So definitely that is a good sign that the NFL is moving forward into the whole, let's get a lot more head coaches that are in the African-American descent. Definitely love seeing it. Love seeing that movement rise up. Steve Wilkes current position right now. It's San Francisco 49ers defense coordinator. 
And guys, he's he's looking great right now for the 49ers. So this could be someone that you know, could do the job right here. Brian Callahan, the current job is the Cincinnati Bengals offense coordinator. Now the Cincinnati Bengals has definitely got a good offense. This, I think, would be an offense where Kyle Pitts and Drake London would tremendously shine in. But it goes with question, just like with uh, Ben Johnson from the Detroit Lions offense coordinator. Would he transition great from an OC to a head coach and not be terrible like Arthur Smith did of calling the offense? That's your fear when you hire someone that really don't have a lot of head coaching experience. Mike McDonald, uh, Baltimore Ravens defense coordinator. Definitely, this is a good sign right here. I'd like to see this happen as well because Baltimore, they built a very great team up there. And to have him come in, this would be, this would be right, I think. But we'd have to wait and see. Aaron Glenn, the current job for him right now is the Detroit Lions defense coordinator. So you're bringing in someone who ha- is working right now with a very young core group. And for him to come in, that would be great because the Atlanta Falcons is nothing but young. And to have him, that's j- that's going to fit so well. Raheem Morris, current job is the Los Angeles Rams defense coordinator. Now, recently, the Rams just got defeated by the Detroit Lions, 25-24. So, it is up in the air with Raheem Morris. A lot of people are vouching for him to come back, but I kind of don't want to see it just simply because he's already been in that interim head coach position slash assistant head coach position and really kind of didn't didn't do too all well right there. But now, however, he did win Super Bowl 53, 52, 53, I believe it was. Or no, excuse me, 54, I should say, in that current position right there. And it was against the Cincinnati Bengals. So two, three years ago, somewhere right there. I forget the numbers because the Roman numerals, I cannot keep up with those to, to save my life. But he did win the Super Bowl with the Los Angeles Rams, you know, throughout that 22 season. Now, here we go. Ben Johnson, the current job, Detroit Lions offense coordinator. Again, you're, you you got to look at him and say, okay, can you make this transition from offense coordinator to head coach and still keep her offense elite like you are with the Detroit Lions? That's the question Arthur Blank needs to ask Ben Johnson because we do not need another three years of suffering like we did with Arthur Smith. And then after that, finally, we have Bobby Slowick. Slowick. Current position right now is the Houston Texans offense coordinator. This is a young group right here. They went with, you know, of course, CJ Shroud. Definitely a lot of success. They're going up into Baltimore as of right now, actually a minus seven and a half point favorite against the Ravens, which is weird because the Ravens have a better record and they've been performing so well throughout the season. And of course the Texans have too. no discredit to them, but the Ravens I think has got the better team. I know they get the more, veteran-like experience team in the playoffs rather than the Houston Texans. So that's just my opinion right there. It is what it is right there. But those are all the head coaching positions right now that the Atlanta Falcons are looking at right now. There could be more head coach interviews coming out, but I think it's pretty much set in stone right now for Bill Belichick to get the job, honestly. It's... Again, it's just set in stone. They're just going to give it a couple weeks, go through the process, maybe like do a second interview with like a Ben Johnson or, you know, Bill Belichick, whoever, 
say, all right, we're really considering you. What can you bring to the table? That's going to be the thing. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm not really expecting January right here to be the month where we get an announcement. If anything, I'm predicting maybe late February, early March right in there to really get our answer of who's going to be the head coach. But now watch how I say that after today's podcast episode and then boom, I don't know where Bill Belichick has been hired as the new Atlanta Falcons head coach. It would be crazy. But Arthur Blank, if you are listening, take a shot at Jim Harbaugh, please. All you got to do is just take a shot. That's, that's all Atlanta Falcons fans and myself do ask. So, guys, what did you think of today's show? Did you enjoy it? If you did, make sure to like button here on YouTube. The audio version, definitely, guys. I'm trying to improve that each and every single day. And, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the tremendous support. Here's a Here as a late. We're continuously growing in the downloads, the listens, the, the exposure on TikTok and YouTube shorts. It's definitely helping out, guys, and I have you to thank for. So, but again, guys, hope you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like button, and I, come on again, we'll catch you all later. Peace.